Look, if we're honest with each other, we've been talking about the Switch Pro maybe longer than most channels in the existence of YouTube. Uh, it, it's been something that's been literally rumored about since before this system right here even came out. The OG Nintendo Switch back in March 3rd of 2017 with this lovely dock. No, this is not like, this is a custom skinned <laughs> Splatoon dock for my son. But the point is that the Switch has been out for a long time and the rumors around the Switch Pro have been there for nearly as long as the platform has existed. And that is because when Nintendo Switch came out, the chip inside it, the Tegra X1, was already in terms of the technology space an older chip and nintendo was advertising this as a portable home console so play it on your tv lift it up take the game with you on the go that's what nintendo advertised it as and still to this day nintendo lists it as a home console so in terms of home console specs using older technology is typically not the route that happens consoles tend to use newer technology Unless, of course, you are the Nintendo Wii, or even the Wii U, which both chose to use older technology locked into an old architecture that literally no one but Nintendo was still even using. So it's fair to wonder where Nintendo is going to go with the Switch Pro. And it's interesting when we hear other people who are more in the know, aka people who actually make video games, talk about the Switch Pro and their thoughts on it and even have what is considered controversial takes. Now, some of you guys have probably already heard this interview, but I'm hoping that we can get a great conversation coming out of it uh, that maybe looks at the greater landscape of what a Switch Pro could be, uh, should a Switch Pro even exist, and what other aspects of the system can we look at beyond just saying, hey, it should be more powerful. Us enthusiast gamers want a more powerful Switch. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, and we've wanted one since before the Switch came out because as capable as this thing is with the Tegra X1, we always want to know what more could we get or could we have gotten then and what more can we get now in the world where 4K is everywhere and next-gen systems are out doing 120 FPS at times. We're left wondering what's next. For the switch so before i get into the developer interview i gotta mention we are giving away a playstation 5 an xbox series x or a nintendo switch details on that are down in the description or on the pinned comment all right let's get into this developer interview uh this comes from the people behind no more heroes one and two and the scott pilgrim vs. the world let's get into it so this was posted over on Nintendo Everything. It's engine software uh, has been behind some of the notable Switch ports that have been recently landed on Switch. The studio handled No More Heroes 1 and 2 and Scott Pilgrim First the World Complete Edition. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, but what we're, we're going to focus on is what was stated at the end. So rumors of a Switch Pro never seem to end. And it's only natural that Nintendo will eventually come out with some sort of new system. Even if it's not, you know obviously the pro it could be like next gen something right there's gonna be something new uh given that engine software has been involved with a bunch of switch games over the years and has a lot of technical experience is there anything you'd like to see from the switch to or switch successor in terms of specs and this is what they had to say truth be told our opinion on this might be counterintuitive for a lot of people but we are not large subscribers of the pro model Sure, it would be nice to have more RAM or faster GPU or CPU compared to before. But if it's still considered the same platform, you must make sure your game runs on every model. So for compatibility reasons, your performance gets benchmarked on the lowest specifications. We have seen with prior upgraded systems that the additional power never really got utilized well for this reason. Now, they're talking, of course, about uh, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 4 Pro, where these platforms did have upgrades. You did get 4K textures in some cases. You did get higher frame rates in games that could just unlock the frame rates. But in general, games didn't see massive improving differences between the Xbox One and the Xbox Series X version, or the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro version. The games were practically, from a gameplay perspective, pretty identical. Uh, 
Could those systems have done more? Absolutely. The Xbox Series X had six teraflops of performance, which is infamously technically more performance than an Xbox Series S, although Series S has its own advantages with using modern architecture, SSDs. So it's kind of a give or take there, but the, obviously the Series X and the PlayStation 4 Pro were more capable than what we were able to get. And I actually thought as we transitioned into the PlayStation 5 and into the uh, Xbox Series X era, that instead of like the Xbox Series S existing, instead of like the all digital uh, PlayStation 5 existing, then maybe they would phase out the, you know, base models of PlayStation 4 and phase out the base models of Xbox One and leave the Series X, leave the PlayStation 4 Pro as a cheaper alternative to get games because they are more powerful platforms and you wouldn't need to gimp them as much to make them capable on those systems. Instead, uh, they have opted both platforms, by the way, to go with the 100% replacement route, which is typically what systems do most console manufacturers do they bring out a new platform like this and you no longer need a wii u you bring out a playstation 5 you no longer need a playstation 4 same with the xbox series x or s you no longer need to have one of those xbox one systems so it's a traditional route but it's also one that i don't know that nintendo needs to mimic i don't think if a next gen switch comes sooner or later or a Switch Pro, or whatever Nintendo decides to do it, whether it's considered a mid-gen upgrade or a next-gen system, that it needs to fundamentally replace this. Now, from a developer perspective, it absolutely benefits them to replace it for the exact reasons outlined in this interview. What did they say? Hey, if it's a Pro model and it comes out, you're not gonna fully utilize it because you need to still make your game work great on this. However, if we do look at the past, and we just stick with Nintendo, we look at the new Nintendo 3DS situation, you'll know the new Nintendo 3DS wasn't exactly uh, not utilized. I'll give you one prime example, and this is always the best example I have, and it's not the Xenoblade Chronicles game port by Nintendo. No, no, no. It's Hyrule Warriors Legends. On the OG 3DS, that game ran like crap. Did it run? Yes. Could you play it? Technically, yes. Could you beat it? Technically, yeah. It's not the most broken game ever, but it runs at 15 FPS pretty much all the time. Whereas on the new Nintendo 3DS, it was almost at a locked 30 FPS and actually ran better in terms of the frame rate than the Wii U version. This is interesting for many reasons, but it also shows that even if, and this is just my humble opinion, we never see a Switch Pro, a new Switch, or a, you know, come out that is going to be fully utilized. That still, for enthusiasts like me, some frame rate and resolution improvements, bare minimum, are a welcome addition. And I would gladly take that. Now, there's other things they can fix as well. Things they probably won't fix until a next-gen Switch. But you never know. There's been rumors of the 4K stuff. That means this dock here needs to be replaced. They can't keep using this dock. It can't output 4K. It doesn't have the chipset available in it to do that. So it, it, they have to do that. Fixing the Joy-Cons and the Joy-Con drift. Something we've wanted them to do forever. But there's even more. Think about it. We now have Nintendo experimenting with AR in a way with Mario Kart Live Home Circuit that is unlike anything we have ever seen really done well before. Having more functionality built in to do AR, such as a camera actually on the Switch itself, on the back side, would do wonders for the ability of AR games. This is not something that deals with resolution or anything. Imagine Pokemon Snap, but being able to do it in the real world. You can argue people already do it by taking screenshots on their phones in Pokemon Go, but imagine being able to do it with your Switch in a more imaginative way that interacts directly with the new Pokemon Snap game. Possible if they start to include a camera that could have that AR functionality, and that's just another way to use it beyond what they're doing with Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. This, VR! Hey, Nintendo, VR, guess what? You know what would make VR better on this? Not only having a faster CPU, faster GPU, a higher refresh rate screen, a higher resolution screen, a higher brightness screen. There are things that Nintendo can improve with a Switch without necessarily having to focus directly on, we need a more powerful platform, which yes, power's a given. If you're going to release an updated, 
newer revised switch that's not about making the system smaller then hey you're gonna have to put some more power in it but i'm not talking about the kind of power that's gonna blow you away that, is, that that's a next gen switch okay but even when nintendo goes next gen i don't want them to just toss this away i think the viewpoint of this of, of these developers and the viewpoint of some consumers and the way that xbox and playstation has been handling things needs to go away now to the credit of sony microsoft and other developers for those platforms they're not just abandoning the playstation 4 and the xbox one they're continuing to make games you know quote unquote backwards compatible or maybe we're at this point we're still making them forwards compatible with, with next gen and i think that is actually something that should be advertised about this i think if they don't make a switch pro and they just go straight to next gen switch fine say they do that in two years right it'd be weird especially with how well this bad boy is selling but say they did that in two years okay next gen switch don't need to toss away the hundred plus million people that are going to own this you don't have to do that i think nintendo has ran into constant problems with throwing away their old audience Unlike uh, Microsoft and Sony, one thing they have gotten right is not throwing away those audiences. Well, if you think about it, they tried to carry the audience with Wii into Wii U. But Wii U was such an unattractive product, it didn't matter. All right? They carried the GameCube audience into Wii. Nintendo used to be masters of backwards compatibility and carrying audiences forward. But I'm not even talking about backwards compatibility. Naturally, I think a next-gen Switch should play all of the old Switch games. But I think even new games that come out shouldn't just be next gen exclusive or Switch Pro exclusive. No, rather I think best played on Switch Pro, best played on Switch 2, but still available on this is the smart way to go. And it also leads to long term success. The Switch brand doesn't need to die. I am so worried. That Nintendo is going to kill off this brand like they have killed off so many other attempts at branding. Think about it. They had a great brand with the Nintendo Entertainment System, then the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It was a long brand name, one that probably needed to be replaced, but they did a great job with it. They had a great branding going with Game Boy, and then they said, you know what? Nope, you can't call this next thing a Game Boy because we don't know if it's going to be successful. Let's instead call it a DS, short for dual screen. All right. Oh, we're kind of done with the Nintendo Entertainment branding. We're going to just stick with the Nintendo name and call it Nintendo 64. And they've kind of done that now every time. Nintendo 64, Nintendo Wii. And they were doing it for Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. But that's the word they kept with their brand name of the whole company in the system. People don't like... It, we're past the days where we just call this thing a Nintendo. Ooh, you're playing a Nintendo. No, you're playing a Switch. Yeah, it says Nintendo, but look at the biggest word. Switch. We call this a Switch. Okay? Nintendo is no longer the needed brand name here. Switch is. The Wii. What do we remember with Wii? We don't remember calling it a Nintendo Wii. We remember Wii Sports. We remember Wii Play. We remember waving our Wiimotes around, right? We remember the name Wii. It was a brilliant marketing strategy completely butchered by the time Wii U came out. I don't want to see that happen to Switch. I think this is a really brilliant branding that has almost no competitors directly in their marketplace. Yes, game streaming is a thing. Yes, remote play is a thing, which by the way, I use remote play on my tablet upstairs to play my Xbox Series X games in my room. Remote play is a real thing, but you know what I don't do? I can't successfully play very well games outside of my home through remote play streaming same thing i have a hard time consistently playing streaming games while i'm in a car while i'm on a bus while i'm on a train while i'm in a plane even using the, even if i paid for the wi-fi on the plane the streaming services don't work as well when i get outside my home switch is still the king of playing on my tv taking it to the crapper bringing it out in the car, going on a trip, and continuing to play the same gameplay experiences as long as I'm obviously not playing an online game because that's obviously going to be restricted to online. The Switch doesn't need online to be a viable platform. And that is the brilliance of this platform is because it is the only platform out there that seems viable 
GPD win. I gotta shout you out. Your latest product looks fantastic. Expensive, but fantastic for PC gamers. But flawed. There's some flaws in that one as well. I don't think any of these portable platforms are ever perfect, but the Switch is in its own market in a way. There is nothing directly trying to take away what the Switch is doing from a major competitor. So why throw away this one with the new one? Why not have the new one but keep this one? And they're saying if you do that, you got to hold games back. But they're already holding games back for PlayStation 4. They're already holding games back for Xbox One. Well, how is this any different than what PC game development has been for all these years? Let's think about this for a moment. For all the developers out there saying, hey, we can't have a Switch Pro because then we got to worry about this. What's the difference in making your game available on PC? You got to make your game run on things like a, a, like a you know 6700K you know processor, maybe even older than that. You got to make the thing run on like a, a, a GTX you know or GT 760 or whatever. And then you also got to worry about all the GPUs and all the CPUs in between when AMD came into the market in the 6900 XT and the in the 3080 and 3090 and 3700 and the 3700 Max Q and the 900 the 980M and like all these other GPUs mobile like we have to develop these games to run on everything from the lowest to the highest on PC across multiple architectures multiple brands how is that any different than making a game run on this but also run on the Switch Pro. I don't buy the argument that people aren't going to take advantage of the more power because, uh, hey, we gotta make it for this. Nintendo is in a very unique position to not only advance technology in all of these various ways and continue to push it with a Switch Pro or a Switch 2, Nintendo is alone in that market. And I think them being alone in that market is the exact reason we need them to take leaps forward. The reason that we need a Switch Pro and a next gen switch and more beyond that we don't want the branding to go away but we also want to see this technology taken further and further and pushed to the absolute limits because nintendo's alone no one else is going to push them to do it nintendo can coast they could take this in the light and coast for three years but we saw what happened when they did that with ds we saw what happened when they did that with wii and 3ds we just shouldn't want Nintendo to get complacent. The reason to want a Switch Pro and then eventually in, in a Switch 2 or whatever they call it, a Super Switch, is because we should not want Nintendo to get complacent. A complacent Nintendo is the worst Nintendo and is going to lead to another Wii U situation, if not worse, maybe even Virtual Boy. Let's not go there. Let's take this in a market you own and do it bigger, better, and faster and cleaner and sleeker over and over again just like phone developers have been doing all these years to keep their success going except you're alone you have nothing else touching your market don't take that for granted nintendo you did it with motion controls you took that for granted let's not take this for granted this is a winner this is a winner for a decade plus if you will let it be all right folks i'm Nintendo robo from the Nintendo prime thank you so much for tuning in <sighs> got another video also in the works for today uh, we'll see when that comes out. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting day today for me, but you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all your support, and I'll catch you in the next video.